one more video about uh, basics of DivGrad and curl. The other video was about two really fundamental identities that we'll keep coming back to. There's very cool ways of understanding these. The curl of a gradient is always zero, and the divergence of a curl is always zero. Um, but there's a lot of other identities um, that are more basic, that are kind of uh, more predictable. Um, like for example, um, on in your book, one of your one of the things you're going to prove. Um, is a, one of a pair of identities, at number 23 and 24, just that the divergence of a sum is the sum of the divergence, and the curl of a sum is the sum of the curl. Very basic things that should always be true about derivatives. But another thing that should also be true, always be true about derivative, is a product rule. And so what if I take the product of a, f of a function, a scalar function in a vector field, which remember has the effect of scaling, rescaling the arrows but not changing their direction. Suppose I take the curl of that new vector field. How is that related to say the curl of f or some other kinds of things. And what we're just going to discover is there is in fact a product rule there. So I wrote some of it out because it's really tedious if I do this live, I, I, I'm afraid. Um, we're going to take the curl of f, little f times big F, and we're going to write it out with the three-dimensional uh, matrix that uh, determinant that remembers the formula for this. And instead of having pqr, we're going to have fp, fq, and fr. So that expands to this whole big thing. And then in each case, what, what's going to happen, we finally got it down to just an honest to god partial derivative of a, a function. It's a product, and so that's going to expand out to two things. So that's going to be df dy times r plus, I don't really need the parentheses anymore, plus dr dy times f minus, and then the same thing is going to be happening with these, all these guys. Tell you what, let me just, I think it's going to be easier if I copy and paste these guys. Okay, so those are going to be both b minus, and then that's going to be, that was a z derivative, and that was a q. That's a z derivative, that's a q. Okay. This one was r, but it's an x derivative now. So I just have to change that guy. This guy going to be both minus, and this guy was a p derivative, a z derivative of p, oops, that's a capital P, and boy, I'm going to have to break this because it's getting big, especially on the magnification level I've got. Then here, it's going to be x derivative of q, that's an x, not a z, sorry, they're next to each other, it's not my fault. And then finally, both negative. That's coming from a p, a y derivative of p. So I actually don't have to change the derivative again. Whew! That looks like a mess, doesn't it? But then we want to look for patterns. Let's look at what's, uh, what are the terms? There's two very different kinds of ter der terms here. There's terms where the f doesn't get differentiated, and there's terms where the f does get differentiated. So let's pull out the ones where the f doesn't get differentiated and see what happens. And I'm just going to copy, oh, I can't really copy the whole thing right here. OK, I'm going to try and copy the whole thing and just take out all the stuff that's not relevant and factor out the f. Oops. So this is all the stuff that had an f in it, but with the f factored out, and then here's the last stuff, but this one was an f derivative, so I'm not saying that's not there anymore, I'm just going to separate it out and write it in a minute, and then I'm going to factor the f out. Okay, so then plus, now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to look at the other stuff, the stuff that didn't have, that have a, had an f derivative. Okay, so this stuff is gone. And then this stuff is gone. We've already taken care of that. Here's the stuff that F didn't get differentiated. OK. And then let's not forget this stuff that was on the second line. OK. Just kidding. Oh, shoot. And I just messed that up big time. Um, all righty. I need to redo this. Bear with me here. 
Okay, so this was the one, sorry, this was the one with q, x derivatives of q, and y derivatives of p. Sorry about that. Okay, and that was a k. It just, I erased it accidentally. The control key somehow, it doesn't get pushed down enough. Okay, so now here's the ones with, oh, that's a q. Big q. And, um, okay. There's the ones with the derivatives. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here on the first line. We've got exactly the curl of f. Because this is just, if I look at what happens, if I don't differentiate the f, I'm just doing exactly the same pattern of derivatives and uh, components as I did with the curl. So that is going to be easy to summarize. That's going to be f times curl of the vector field f. And then plus, now what's going on here? I am doing the derivatives of f, and then what do I do with them after I take the derivatives? I take exactly the pattern that would create the cross product of this thing with the derivatives of f with p, q, and r, with, in other words, with f. So I claim that's exactly the gradient of f. I don't need bold for any of that. Cross product with the vector field f. Because what would that do? It would take this combination df dx, df dy, df dz as a vector, and then do exactly this combination of that with, with uh, the components p, q, and r of the vector field. And so that's pretty cool. Remember what we were calculating. That's the curl of a product. And I'll just copy it down here. There is a product rule, and not too surprisingly, um, the product involves the only kinds of things that would really make a whole lot of sense here. It's not surprising that a cross product comes out, and it has to be of two vector fields, and one of them has to be a derivative of f. Okay, so gradient of f cross f. And the other one, you have to leave f alone and multiply it by the appropriate derivative of f. Well, you just use the same notion of derivative, curl, and you just multiply it as a function times a vector field. There are some of these rules that aren't as obvious, but this one is actually pretty guessable. If you say, what would be a reasonable, meaningful, simple product rule for the curl of a function times a vector field? And indeed, it's, it's exactly that, that kind of guess that a lot of people would make. Okay, so you're going to have simpler examples, certainly, than this uh, on the homework, but uh, I just want to show you how it works out.